five years. Uh, welcome to Telecom Legend series. Uh, today, uh, I've got a very dear friend, uh, Mr. Sayyid Swafi, who has been a real telecom legend, who has been CEO at a very, very early stage of telecoms. Uh, he'll be talking to us today. So I, I know I think you'd like to hear more from him rather than from me. So Sayyid, I think uh, it'll be good if you can just tell us your 25 years of Indian telecom success story journey, how and where you were at what time and how you contributed to this industry. Yeah, so it's a, uh, an amazing, uh, you know, sector that's, uh, you know, almost the foundation of the Indian growth story. But before I carry on, uh, I just must say that uh, you guys at the Telecom Skill Development Council are doing amazing work. And thank you for connecting us uh, to the viewers and those who are interested in the telecom sector and the skill development around it. So really, really appreciate what you guys are doing. Yeah, I mean, to, to on a personal front uh, and connecting with the telecom sector, it's been an amazing journey. So we were outside. Uh, I was posted outside and uh, my connect with telecom started by accident, actually. We were, I was working with Coca-Cola. We were based internationally and uh, no immediate plans to come back. And as you know, consultants will keep connecting and saying, you know, are you interested in coming back? And there's so much happening in the telecom sector. This was early 2000. Five, six, you know, I'm, I'm talking 18 years from now, back. And um, I said, no, we're not keen, you know, happy professionally, personally, family. And, uh, you know, they insisted that one, one, on your annual visit, one of your visits home, back home, Christmas holidays or whatever, I just have a coffee with Sunil Mittal. Now, it's hard to, re to refuse a coffee with Sunil, right? So SBM is yeah. a, you know, <laughs> a legend. I mean, he's a legend many times over. So, yeah, I mean, we, we were on a holiday and in one of those Decembers, we had a coffee at his office. Uh, I, I had a coffee with him. And then, as you say, one thing led to another. And uh, the, I went back and then spoke to my wife and kids and said, look, this seems to be happening. I mean, I don't know what to make of it. We'll have to give up Coke and come back. Yeah. Uh, and we decided to do that. Uh, and, then, and more than happy that we did, actually, because... Then we saw uh, the Indian growth story fueled by the telecom growth story really taking off. Right, you were part of it and we were all part of it. And um, yeah, I mean, 2006, seven onwards for the next 10 odd years, I was actively part of telecom in, in Airtel, then uh, Reliance Communication and then Veom Networks, as you know, both on the infra side as well as the uh, telecom mobility side. So yeah, amazing journey. Um, couldn't have uh, had a better opportunity, I, I, I think, honestly, looking back. Yeah, so telecom, I, I think even today, um, uh, you know, we are, uh, rather I'll say we scale a lot of people, we train a lot of people, but ultimately a lot of our people are pushed by other industries because uh, professionals are so good. Yeah. And um, the reason was, I think, in the foundation years, um, yeah. likes of Mr. Sunil Bharti Mittal, I think they had yeah. vision. They picked up the best possible resources from FMCG, Coke, Pepsi, Levers yeah. on one side, Xerox, you know, all these companies were doing so well at that time, uh, yeah. top spots and good professionals. And ultimately that made the foundation so strong. Yeah. And that's why, you know, like, even if you go to any the telecom company today, you'll find probably the best of the professionals out there. So that was a really uh, good thing. So, um, uh, in in your um, uh, journey, and 18 years is definitely, I think, was the most happening period. I yeah. think uh, people who joined in 94, 95 for 7, 8 years, 10 years, they saw a lot of struggle. But then I think 2003, 4 onward. Yeah, that's when it took off. When it really took off, and that was the time, I think, when people actually uh, started enjoying it more. Yeah. And also getting much better recognition, and definitely people knew that telecom time has come. So that that's great. So uh, you have actually worked abroad, and you have also worked in yeah. India. And uh, I'm very happy that I'm talking to you because uh, no, normally, you know, like uh, we have professionals who have either grown from business side, sales side, or they have grown from network side. But yeah. in your case, I. Think you have handled both, you have handled infrastructure as a telecom uh, 
uh, player and you also have uh, handled sales and marketing. So for the youth uh, in coming years, which are the best verticals uh, for growth in telecom? So interesting, uh, you say that. Um, so, you know, like countries, uh, sectors also go through life cycles. That's the way one should look at it. There was a phase, Arvind, when you, if you remember, uh, it was like a gold rush. We would roll out a tower and within three months, six months, uh, you will have a couple of lakhs of revenue per month on a tower because yeah. there was so much lack of telecom network, right? We were just feeding it in. And all you needed was good distribution quickly, and, you know, put a tower, get good distribution and recharging going and you would have a business. I think that phase is over, that phase of voice expansion, because voice is now commoditized. So the landscape on the life cycle curve has changed. Now, obviously, it's moved towards data delivery and the quality of data delivery uh, and the interconnected, uh, you know, way of things that's going to happen. And that is already happening, right? Uh, IoT, machine to machine, AI, and, and we can talk on and on. And that's where then 5G becomes an enabler, and 4G was earlier, and 5G, and then in the future there will be 6 and 7G, etc. All these are enabling uh, levels, nothing more than that. I, I don't think one should get over carried away by what's happening in 5G today or what will happen in 6G. It is what will come out at the other end for the consumer, both on the B2B as well as the B2C side. So that's the way to look at it. So I think that what is getting impacted now is the use cases have increased many times. So look at where we are as a country. Yeah? And, and I think it's a little important for uh, the new talent to understand it. There was a phase when about 2010, 11, 12 onwards, when everything started coming together. And that created magic. So you had telecom sector reaching out and connecting the country, right? Fiber getting laid out. Therefore, better data delivery started happening. Technology started coming in big time. Not telecom, technology started coming in big time. And you had UPI and payment gateways opening up. So digitization started happening. Yes. When all of these underlying factors came together, then this, this boom happened. The e-commerce boom happened, delivery, logistic, data delivery, content, everything then started, you know, very hard to, you know, keep pace with it. That is, that is a magic that we've seen and the inflection point that we've seen. Now, with 5G coming in, you're going to see another inflection point. That's the way we read it. And we work with a lot with young startups and technology and where everything merges, you know, digital, AI, etc. And we see all these factors are now fueled by this underlying layer of 5G and AI, which is an, these are enablers in, into the ecosystem. So therefore, what are the new use cases that are coming? One is, of course, driven by better data delivery. No latency or very low latency, obviously. And therefore, content has become key. So if somebody is looking to do something really meaningful, they should become masters of content delivery, whether creating it or helping it deliver better. That is a game which will continue forever. Right, that's not going to go away. Then IoT, uh, Internet of Things, connecting devices, basically. It's not about putting up a network anymore. It, that, is, uh, that is very basic. It's about what you do with the network after that. So how do you get, if you remember, we used to do drive tests because it was all about voice, right? Right. Those are now not required. Those are a given, right? Minus 60 dB, this, that, that coverage is required. Now, how much, how, how, how good your coverage is indoor, basically, because that's where consumption is happening. 80%, 70% consumption is happening indoor, right, of data and content. So, therefore, how good are you in optimizing data networks? That is a skill required. How are you good at connecting devices? Because every platform, every company is now interconnected. Nobody is working in isolation. So you're connecting APIs all over. So if somebody from telecom can also understand the interconnected way of things, that the way, the way they are operating, the whole ecosystem, that is where the win is going to be. So any smart talent coming in should not isolate themselves only in telecom terms. They should be able to understand what this connectivity is doing into the ecosystem in various industries. 
and and help connect those apis help connect those partnerships help connect those devices that is where the main game changing aspects of this telecom uh, skill council is going to come in. thank you so um, you know like you have been um, uh, guiding many youth uh, now in your new avatar uh, right uh, and, and you have seen the uh, journey of many professionals in the last 25 years will you still yeah. recommend uh, telecom as a career or as a very good career and growth potential um, how will you guide people on that yeah so i i think one of the smartest th- things sbm uh, did very early and he was a trend setter in this was to realize that telecom infrastructure etc are just enablers and therefore what you need is world class distribution and reach very quickly right so so there's a team of network uh, you know professionals putting up the network but you needed professionals on the ground to take it wide deep and wide and therefore the skills like you mentioned from fmcg etc was where it all played out those were guys who were professionals in their own fields sales marketing distribution b2b b2c connect etc and the communication which came with it that is where this whole game then played out over that phase of life now it is evolving that phase is also evolved that distribution reach is already there you yeah, know we are already available in probably 6 lakh villages given take a few villages here and there we already uh, you know remotely connected because you can charge over the air you don't need to be physically going there you open an outlet and everything is ota right so it's it's, it's very much simplified now so now what are you going to do you're going to optimize networks you're going to, so that's a game which is going to happen optimize data networks uh, reach every point of use basically especially heavy points of use uh, fiber connectivity is going to continue i don't think uh, i i think people are misreading it saying 5g aa gaya hai so it's a mantra and fiber is no longer going to be required i don't think so and nothing replaces fiber you know that right the quality right. of two way communication so i think uh, inter uh, concurrent fiber and 5g connectivity both will be required and therefore the skills required to deliver that so that's where the game should be so one thing i will caveat however and when the way, the, the way I, i and i interact a fair bit with the new generation you know now so we we in our careers we change five to six jobs the new generation will change 5 to 6 careers okay not 5 to 6 jobs 5 okay. to 6 careers therefore, therefore that's a that's so if you get it you know understand that thought process as a youngster you're going to say yeah okay so but i i can start with the telecom but i may not be a telecom professional throughout i will i will morph into something different i will become you know something connected to telecom in adge- in an adjacent uh, environment i may start working there i may get into data security for like cyber security for example so there are many adjacencies which i have opened up in the last 10 years so i think one is the openness and the ability to reskill yourself all the time is something the new generation needs desperately otherwise if they keep thinking like in our times they're saying i'm a voice you know network optimizing professional that's gone that's 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 hardly required you set up antennas and you optimize yeah, once in a while you got to keep doing it but that's it right now technology you can almost do it from the back end so therefore therefore you have to reskill all the time so so you are talking of data networks you're talking of cloud you're talking of edge you're talking of you know with a whole gamut so i think anybody coming into the telecom sector has to keep their minds uh, open into getting into adjacencies along the way and become a much well-rounded professional for end to end delivery understanding the whole ecosystem of delivery is very important too important right it's no longer simple I, I, yeah i loved your uh, remark on uh, multiple careers is it a multiple yeah. jobs oh, and that, that is something you know i actually my next question was about to be on that because we are facing those challenges yeah and i think a uh, youth has to be really told that you only at least stay with uh, one profession at least for some time uh, what we are finding is that they are probably either they uh, don't have so much of trust and belief 
uh, like for example, we train a lot of people on telecom side, and then they go to the market. They realize that uh, logistics is offering better job or better prices or better salaries. They just move there, right? And and that was not happening earlier. Yes. Uh, with, and and some of the times they don't even realize that if they had yes. stayed in telecom for three years or four years, uh, from fifteen thousand they would have risen to thirty forty thousand. Whereas in uh, other professions, you may not grow so much. That's true. They have so That's much of now. They just want now. Now what you're paying. Uh, uh, instant gratification. Yeah. That, that's right. That is what they're doing. So that is a challenge. I mean, and I, I think that's a employer's challenge. That And that is going to continue and become bigger, Arvind. I'm, I don't think it's going to go away. Yeah. Because the nature of this, uh, the, the new generation, because of the possibilities that exist, right? And it's more democratized now. Right. I mean, the whole job scene. Yeah. So my next question, the next two questions I'll say, like first question is, uh, what is your guide advice to TSSC, Telecom Sector Scale Council? What should we be doing for engineering college students? Right. How we should uh, make them better professional, yeah. ready to be absorbed by the industry? What's your guidelines on that? Yeah, so one thing which we find, uh, Arvind, and, and this was when we were in telecom or or even, uh, you know, telecom infrastructure or other companies, and IT faces the same thing, by the way, right? Uh, whether it's TCS, yeah. everybody. It takes about six months to train or retrain people coming out of engineering colleges to make them employable, right? right? That is money wasted by the corporates and they don't like it because... That's a learning time for these professionals. That's not contributing time. So you have an LT and you have a CT basically. The CT starts six months later when they're ready to be absorbed into the active force. I think the best thing that the Telecom Skill Council can do is bridge that gap. Right. In the last couple of semesters, how can the Skill Council embed themselves into the relevant courses, obviously, people who are pursuing electronics, communication, or, you know, getting likely to get into telecom, etc. How can you skill them at that level itself and make them more life ready and employable the day they get out? You know, with just a 15 day, one month, you know, induction program, they're up and running. That to me will be the biggest value that you can bring to the corporates, as well as the kids, by the way, because, you know, it's a game changer for them. They are employable and they're ready to get into the active workforce you know, very, very quickly. Right now, it's a six-month lag. By the time yeah. they get anything worth independent charge or any field activity, etc. So that is one, I would say, the biggest value add that can happen. The second is uh, thought leadership. So, so what we are discussing is that the sector is going through so much. The whole ecosystem is going through so much. The pace of change is increased. I mean, you just look at AI, and that has triggered a whole revolution in itself, right? right. Which is impacting every industry. I mean, you, we can talk for hours only on that subject. Therefore, if the government, the corporates, the individuals, employees, everybody is struggling to keep pace. You are in a very nice position. You're at the intersection of all these stakeholders. How can you bring thought leadership into the interventions that are beginning to happen by the government? Like for corporates, for individual, for employed, for future future employees, for the sector itself. So, so what's good? Not as a as a follower of okay. So five G is getting launched now. We need to do programs to skill people to manage five G. Rather, if the Telecom Skill Council can say okay, so six G and seven G are going to come in the future. Trials are already beginning to happen, you know, in parts of the world. How can I learn and bring that ahead of the curve, three years ahead of the curve with, with uh, the government of India, TRAI, COAI, you name it. I mean, you know, all the you know, organizations which are involved and the companies, for example, and have sessions with them, you know, right. build on, on your platform and bring them together and say, look, we are reading these trends. You will need such professionals. We are happy to work with you and collaborate and skill your, your continue, existing teams as well as future talent in this area. Would you want to be part of this journey? If you lead this as Telecom Sales Council, I think it will be a huge value. Huge value. Because nobody is doing it. Everybody is active. Very good. I think good points. And we are really 
uh, working on those thoughts and will rather when you say it re uh, reinforces our belief. <laughs> it's really good. Most yeah. important. And, and second question uh, was you know, like uh, maximum jobs are in the lowest part of the pyramid. Maximum jobs are uh, startup jobs, uh, blue collar jobs. And you personally, uh, I think last many years now are into philanthropic work. Mobilization yep. of youth in that area is very, very important. Any suggestion, any guidance from your side? What is the best way of mobilizing youth uh, to come to telecom jobs? Uh, and I'm saying Pan India, you know, like you know, especially yeah. three or yeah, four towns. What is the best suggestion you like to give? So one of the things we struggle with, so we educate kids from KG till 10th. And okay. then as they get into 11, 12, uh, we want to make them life ready, as we call it, uh, okay. employable, right? Uh, now, you know the challenges that we are going to always have with employment opportunity. They're going to be limited. No government, no corporate is going to provide employment for more than a million people a month. It's not, it's not, it's not there because yeah. tech, new age tech is taking over and the number of jobs is going to be limited. Therefore, the talent which is coming through from grade 11, 12 and getting into graduation phase has to have skills which make them employable. Pensions along with organizations like ours, let's say, and many others, there are many, many others, and yourselves, for example, are at levels where they start getting into grade 11, 12, and we start giving, providing them skills, vocational skills and skills which are specific requirements of the sector, for example. That will then, not everybody will absorb that and become very good at it, but a majority of the people will get clarity. Oh, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a good technician, for example, or I'm not going to be a good technician. This comes out very quickly. It's like we say uh, to startups also, fail fast. So don't wait for three years, five years and burn too much money. Do a POC, do an MPV and, and fail if you have to and pivot and rediscover yourself. The same thing goes for talent also. Rather than being the wrong job for the next 10, 20 years and struggle professionally and personally, find out very quickly while you're in grade 11, 12, while you're discovering where to go in life. That is where the intervention is most helpful for me. And partnering with such organizations, it could it, it could be I think Grimji Foundation, Shashi Damodaran Foundation, you know, many many foundations who are doing such work uh, and working on the youth of the country and trying to skill them. Those partnerships will be very. Say so, yeah, like, uh, which is your favorite book? I know you read a lot. Uh, oh, which, like, oh my God. That's a loaded question, man. I read a lot and uh, ah, I'm currently reading History of the Middle East. Uh, right. So I can't say that's my favorite book, but uh, with this very difficult. It's like choosing amongst your children. It's very right. difficult to choose a favorite book or a favorite movie for that matter. Right, right. A that's favorite right. song. But uh, yeah, I mean, there'll be, there'll be so many from books from which I've learned and continue to learn here all the time. So, man, it's, that's a, I, I can fail in that question happily without saying, look, I've learned so much from so many books, but uh, uh, one, of, one of my favorites could be Homo Sapiens uh, by Harari. Uh, that would be one of my favorites. It kind of changed the perspective for me uh, about our species in a way. Uh, I okay. started looking at it differently, the evolution piece, etc. So, yeah, if I have to pick top five, one of the top fives, I would say Homo sapiens. And then there's Homo deus and many others by him. So Homo sapiens, okay. If there's one. The recent one. So, yeah. which are the you know, hobbies which you have developed after the age of 50 and do you feel that good that you have developed those habits? Wow. Hobbies? Yeah. Man. So, I laugh and when people say, what do you do? I said, I celebrate life. And, and uh, right. to me, Arvind, uh, you know, when we are in corporate jobs, we take ourselves too seriously. Right. Honestly, I have been guilty of it and all of us right. have been guilty. Anybody who says they haven't, you know, there's something wrong. Uh, we think we, you know, the world revolves around us and all that. And, and right. the earlier you realize it's not the case, the, right. the, the more relaxed you are. So, right. Yeah, right. I had set myself a, 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 a number that by 50, I would uh, get off the treadmill, the corporate treadmill, 
and do something different. So 10 years back, I set up a foundation, um, which at 50 was already up and running and doing well. And then I had set up my fund uh, through which we invest in technology. So uh, working with uh, new age technologies and the youth, I think uh, is is huge for me because you're always on your toes and you're, you are trying to keep pace and learn from these kids who are thinking, you know, years ahead of you, right? So that is so exciting for me. But what is more gratifying is the foundation work. So gratifying that one and, and, and uh, yeah, uh, and, and fun and learning is, is my technology piece, investing piece. But we travel a lot, uh, read a lot, culture, history, you know, you just celebrate life, basically. I mean, look, you can go through life, you know, and at the end, uh, you know, have regrets. Why have regrets? You know, do whatever, you know, God has provided us and enjoy. Very good. And which has been your uh, favorite destination in India when it comes to travel? Ah. Wow. Um, if I'm to pick places, I would or uh, I would say Kerala uh, and Rajasthan would be my oh, two. I would say Jaisalmer on one side, very, very quaint and different. And of course, the backwaters in Kerala would be right. my two primes way up there. Ditto, ditto same answer yeah, I would have given. Exactly. Ditto they're they're just so unique. I mean, unique. they are so rich, yeah. so rich yeah. in its beauty, you know, so diverse. And uh, one country abroad, which you like? Wow. I would say, um, I mean, I find Europe most fascinating. Uh, yeah. Most, most. Uh, because of, of the history and culture. and, and uh, I would say Greece, uh, okay. to me. Uh, I mean, that's where democracy started. That's where philosophy and the whole thought process about life and evolution and so many things started and you go to go to the places and you say that these are the platforms and the pedestals from where people spoke in 2000 years back 2005 years back i mean wow you get really wowed with that right and then the natural beauty as well yeah. santorini for example so you have both ends you know deep history and culture as well as you know the natural beauty so i would say greece is a yeah very fascinating place for me so, Sayed, you are very well um, I think connected with your roots. Uh, you know, every year I get lovely package <laughs> of good from you. I think yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I think it is very, very satisfying for you. You are in yeah. touch with your uh, native, you are forming, and you are happy with it. So, that's really good. So, I think it is very interesting uh, <laughs> dialogue with you. I think we can probably talk for hours. Yeah, uh, but uh, definitely, I think uh, all the youth will listen. You, uh, they'll be very happy to know, uh, and also I think learn a lot from you. And definitely, I think they'll be in touch with you through the various social medias. So I think we'll. This is our time to really pay back to the society. So I think in a Absolutely. way we're all doing that. So thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate. It. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you so much for making us part of making part of this, and uh, wonderful that you guys are doing this. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.